what is it? What does it do? Where it comes from? You know? Anything? It can come from natural or artificial sources. It can come from natural or artificial sources. That's right. Traditionally, many painting, you know, is has a long history. So the older pigments are mainly from natural sources because you know we've been painting for a long time. Nowadays, most of our pigments, especially if you buy a paint in the, in the uh, art store, your pigments are, of course, synthetic. Anybody know of a natural pigment? The name? No? I, uh, seems like ultramarine could come from like a rock type thing. Or That's right, a semi precious one. Uh, Not this That's right. Uh, traditional, genuine ultramarine. I don't think it was called ultramarine at that time, but genuine ultramarine was coming from lapis lazuli. That was one of the first blue pigments that was very expensive, very hard to extract. And uh, when they came up with ultramarine blue at the beginning of the century in France, uh, they said, oh, finally it's going to be the replacement. You know, if you like this lazuli, but this one was a synthetic product, and this one basically what's happened is the price of blue became, you know, so low that everybody could use could use it finally. So lapis lazuli was one of them. So natural pigments can come from semi precious stone, for example. You can still buy lapis lazuli. It's just very expensive to do that. Any other natural pigments? People know. The use, yeah. I'm sorry. Metallic ones, like perhaps these ones, right? Like yeah. this. That's not a natural. Well, it's not really a natural pigment because it's um, it's an alloy of um, uh, actually copper and uh, and zinc. So it's uh, it's brass brass powder basically. So we're basically making it into a powder form. Did you buy that one when you were making the curves? Yeah. You have that then, right? All right. So basically, we have natural pigment and we have synthetic pigment. That's the first classification. Uh, what else do you think you know we could use as a vocabulary to talk about pigment? Okay, that's that's a good point. Um, all the pigments we sell, and when people will sell you pigments, uh, suppose supposedly they are supposed to be pure. When you are buying a tube of paint, you are buying a mixture of pigment binder, uh, perhaps filler pigments. But when you're buying pigments uh, from me or most of the people I know, you, you only buy pure pigments in the jar. So they are supposed to be pure. So if that's not one of them. <coughs> Another one? Yeah. Someone other than her, please. <laughs> natural or synthetic is great, but natural or synthetic doesn't really help you when you're making paint. It's like for the history. It's to know, you know, where it comes from, and it's it's an anecdote, you know, to the history of the pigments and everything. When you're making paint, you need to know about pigments a certain way. I mean, it's great to know the history. And by the way, I brought uh, many books here. One of them is in French, but this one deals with the history of the different pigments. It's called Les Matériaux de la Croix. Unfortunately, this one's in French. A lot of times the books are in English, but this particular one is in French. So at the break, if you have time, you can come and have a look. These are technicals, books, uh, encaustic pigments, and these are catalogs of artists which are customers, and uh, some of them are making their paints, some of them are using mine, but all of them are customers, just so that you know. And I, I should have done